Dr. Leon, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Dylan. It's quite a privilege that you've come all this way oh. just to chat to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely. I just came here for, I was here for five minutes. I saw how busy you were the entire time. I'm like, damn. <laughs> it's unpredictable. How do you uh, live a life like that? You kind of get used to it. Eh? It's not <laughs> ideal. Yeah. You try to balance your work and your personal life. But again, yeah. Um, but I think you're in the business of saving lives. So it's like uh, you look at your own life and you yeah. balance it all in that you way. Try. Yeah, you try. You try. <laughs> Because you know, it's quite an intense place to be in. Even like stepping into a hospital, you get the those, you know, that feeling. Even we come in, we came in as, you know, to do the podcast. But when you step in, you, you get that sense of anxiety, I guess. Because uh, you the, the feeling that something's always going on. Yeah, so even, always. Even today, as would seem a relatively quiet day, but it, it's, it's never quiet in a hospital. It's, we have degrees of busyness. Yeah, so, clearly. But you are correct. There's always something going on. There's, I mean... It, 24-7, mm. 65 days a year, it has to be. I don't think you can even take yeah. a break from that. No, not really. I mean, and how does it get, like, do you feel guilty when you take a break? You do. I mean, you feel very... Wow. Like, so for example, this this coming weekend is my birthday weekend. I mean, obviously, oh. I, I need to take it off. I yeah. haven't taken off in a while. Wow. So I have, I mean, I have a colleague who covers me some... From, in terms I mean, of... he's on our core yeah. roster. But even so, like, my patients still don't like, like yeah. it. So... Because they're used to yeah, you, yeah. But you, you have to explain to them, you know, that, uh, I mean, for the most part, they understand. I think uh, and, sometimes uh, we don't look at you guys as human, maybe. <laughs> Some people don't, unfortunately. Yeah. Some people get very mad when, uh, you know, you can't accommodate them. And uh, you're not around or whatever yeah. it so is. So just before, you, like, just an hour before you came in, we had yeah. uh, one of our challenge, more challenging patients. Wow. Um, he's ill, um, needed, wanted to see me urgently. And I was like, no, I can't really accommodate. You know, yeah. it's, it's full up. It was on a Tuesday. You know, emergencies, you come to the trauma unit and you get preference because it's a trauma unit. Okay, right. You just shouted at us, didn't want to pay. Shouted. You know? I screamed. Yeah, <laughs> intimidated my poor. Wow. Person. And then we said, look, we can accommodate you on Thursday. But he said, no, that was too long, which is today. And then he came in today. But where's my appointment? We're like, but sir, you, you didn't make the appointment. You screamed at us and didn't. So, no, it, it's difficult. So, you get varying uh, you get, you get patients. That. Look, I mean, we try to understand because, you know, when you're ill, you're vulnerable Stress levels are high. It you know you, yeah. you try to make that, but uh, you know, it goes I, beyond. I think I always looked at it as uh, if a doctor, if I go to a doctor and they take care of me, I'm absolutely grateful. I don't know whether whether we paid money or either gave me a discount, whatever it is. I just I want to know that I'm better now. Yeah, That's health, how I look at it. For me, your health takes beyond anything else. Yeah, so whether it's money or not. And look, I mean, obviously finances play a huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Role, yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. As doctors, I mean, me personally, you you see a person's health as exactly. So somebody says you're sick, and I can't see them, which is not, which is almost every day. If it's yeah. not booked, or they have to come via casualty because you know our in hospital patients obviously take. Right. Okay. Yeah. That, they that are makes the sense. Patients, yeah. 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 Because that's something, and I read something that says uh, you can have a hundred problems, but once you get sick, you only have one problem. Yeah. Because exactly. all those other problems go away. Then you realize. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How yes. fragile uh, your exactly, life actually yes. is. Yeah. You know, it's 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 intense uh, yeah, it walking is. in here. Yeah. So I want to know you from a human perspective. As we say, we don't want we don't really know our doctors, GPs, whatever as a human. We want to come in, want them to treat us. And get out of there feeling better and we don't care what they feel afterwards. So I want to get to know you. And what got you into this whole, uh, you know, medical uh, industry? Well, um, myself personally, my parents were in the medical field. Okay. My mom was a nurse. My dad's a medical technologist. So um, growing up, that's essentially what you're exposed to. Right. And you, I don't know, for me, you just sort of knew. I didn't ever think of doing anything else. So that was yeah. it for you. Yeah. So, so obviously, as a kid, you think firefighter. Yeah. yeah there's a lot of options. I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. There's of a lot options, of options. It's always it always came back to to a science yeah. field, and then in high school, you you well, I was That's lucky enough to to realize this is what I want to do, and specifically, so I never really had any. So there's nothing like confusing you. Oh, I don't know what to do. No, no. I wow. Mean, this was obviously the speciality. Like yeah, that's you, the... Because yeah. initially you're like, no, you see it on TV. No, I'm going to be a neurosurgeon or yeah, yeah. cardiac surgeon and change this. But, you know, you, you, you find your niche, what, what you love. That's and true. Like in internal medicine, this is... For me, this is like being a detective. You yeah. Know, somebody Can comes imagine. in with this and you're finding clues to eventually find out what's wrong. So, so. Let, let's, let's put it in the way... Let's say you didn't have that uh, background where your parents were in the medical field. How do you think that would have uh, changed anything? I, I don't think. Eh? I think I was lucky enough to be exposed early. That's a you good know? point. So I, I could use a microscope before I knew how to read. Wow. Well. <laughs> my dad used to take me to work. So you're like very curious uh, about the world. Yeah, no, so I, I yeah. love stuff like that. So, But I think others who weren't exposed. But 
you just kind of knew. I mean, yeah. you just, I just find the human body fascinating. And it's nice to hear because you always want someone that's dealing with your body to not just yeah. know it, yeah. but they want to, you want them to be like, uh, you know, infinitely curious yeah. about what's going on. And obviously, I mean, they're helping people, but that, that's, that's, that forms the fundamental. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? So yeah. helping animals or helping people. I mean, that's, you know, so you for me, it doing, was like that's your impact in the world, yeah, I guess. So those were. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a lot to, like even with the asking you questions like that, because you, uh, I don't want to put it in a way you just talking about, yeah, I became a doctor. Like when you ask children in school, what do you want to become when you grow up? Mm. And what's the answer? Doctor. Yeah. And, but do you care about really saving people? Yeah, but I want to be a doctor. It looks nice, you know, yeah. in the movies, but like, you know, you don't really have yeah. time for yourself. So I always for tell me, them. Yeah, I knew it wasn't glamorous. I could yeah. tell, I could see the hours that were worked. I mean, yes, it has its perks, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you, you get to a certain life. It's what you make of it. Exactly. And a lot of my friends and colleagues I know did medicine because of their parents wanted them to be doctors, lawyers, or engineers. So the For pressure from... There. Yeah. Or the generational pressure. My parents, my, my, my father, mother, grandfather was a doctor. So I had to... Oh, so okay. So they were... Well, their minds were made up for them. You know, you, you could see the, the passion and stuff was lacking. But I always used to tell them, Use it as a means yeah. for something else. So exactly. do this. Do what you need. Nobody's telling you you need to specialize. Yeah. Spend your time. I mean, you earn a decent salary. You you know, I mean, you're always going to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And use that. I mean, follow your passion. Use yeah, that. use it as a, as a springboard. Them, yeah, whether it's medicine or not, whatever you're doing, if you are getting paid to do it, yeah. use that to fund something else. That's true. You don't, it, it, it's, it's, it's a different mindset. It's like that ikigai always, uh, situation. Yeah, you always <laughs> try, you always think you're going to get boxed. I mean, obviously it's not that lucky for anyone. Sometimes you just do it because you have a family to support. You have this. You're just making ends meet. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it's easy to sit here and say, oh, follow your dreams. If you, but for those of you who can, always try to. Because I always feel if you're doing what you love, yeah. everything else will follow. That's true. That's what you also kind of, you know, doing all this research, looking at the mind and stuff. When exactly. you do things that you love, especially like the purpose, you know, finding your purpose in life. Yeah. And now I, was, I realize how important that is. And like with you, always wanting to be in medicine and stuff like that. Is this your purpose, would you say? I would think so. Right? I, I would say so. That's good to know. Like, uh, I mean, I have other passions. Yeah. Like I, I, I love photography. Yeah. I love cooking. <laughs> so I, I mean, I would, I mean, my my friends and colleagues, my, my other friends, they've been in the restaurant business, so I'm lucky enough to have okay. joined that recently. Yeah. Oh, right. So that's like another side another that's venture. completely separate to this, yeah. which is, um, it's got no monetary benefit yeah. for me. For me, it's but like just like doing else. it, being a no, part of it. it. Yeah. You meet so many different people. Otherwise, I can tell you medics are very boring. <laughs> no, because it's, uh, we meet and because we're in this enclosed sort oh, of, I get you know, you genre, mean. we only yeah. see other other doctors other and doctors, specialists. Other, other, well, not just doctors, other people from the medical field. True. Your friends and colleagues are nurses and physios. And and when you when you out together, you invariably talk about your this, patients. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a breakfast meeting this morning. Yeah. With this thing, and my, my GP friends, who I don't ever see, I just talk to them on the phone. Yeah. And we reverted back to just talking about <laughs> our patients. And I even told the rep, I joked, I was like, look, we have yeah. a ch chance to talk about anything we want to, but this is what we, so. Wow. Yeah. So that's what happens. So like you kind of branched out in that way to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> see your other sides, other yeah, passions yeah. and so on. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, uh, s since you're super intelligent, how were you in, <laughs> how were you in school? <laughs> in school? Uh, look, my, my, my parents were very like uh, traditional. Yeah, and yeah. Strict. strict and so on. Yeah. Right. So uh, it was like you have to be in school, get good grades. Um, so I, I would say I would myself typically quite nerdy yeah like i like the library reading all the time I like re yeah reading yeah. i bloomed like with the sports thing that came secondary so okay. i found that like cricket was my thing oh, okay right, right so I that, so, but you still so, had it yeah, yeah i mean it was that. there so obviously in our our schools we never the school that i went to yeah it wasn't even a model c school you know it's a they never had so it weren't like focused on sports no it wasn't it stuff, was just right. we had pe once yeah. a week for oh 30 yeah minutes. that yeah. wasn't that was it. I learned nothing. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah definitely. Go and run around and run. <laughs> they give you a ball to play yeah, with. Yeah, there was no cricket pitch. The soccer pitch was just like a muddy ground. Um, 
So it wasn't there's like no Disney tennis courts. You know, and I'm just comparing it to what yeah, yeah, yeah. nowadays in at the moment, private yeah. schools, right? So that exposure for me was so whatever was done was self taught. Oh, okay. But I, but I loved it. In yeah, that. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, you wish you could go back and yeah. <laughs> have more have of that. that time. Yeah, yeah, right. So in varsity, obviously, there was more opportunity because yeah. um, you met other guys. And then you met... One of the same things as yeah, you. Yeah, and then you so. met with the, with the, you know, the, the KZN, or, I mean, the, the Joe Berg or the KZN, you know, the South African A players. That right. And then oh, then you continue you, that you way. Nice yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, so... So it was like, uh, for you, like, was it more uh, late at night learning and, you know, always busy with assignments and exams or yeah, were you a bit laid back? Was, no, no, for me, I had... You were so in, I, in it. I, for me, I was always, if I had something to do, I had to do it. I, I didn't really procrastinate. Oh, you did so it immediately. So if I had homework, it had to be done. Or right. it would be on my mind. If I had something to oh, do, you had to complete. I would always have <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I get what you mean by uh, that. But in projects and stuff, I always try to take... Well, that will make you like an amazing doctor because you uh, do uh, whatever you need well, to and try, try. don't revert things. I tried. So when it came to studying, obviously it's very different studying in school. And so there was, again, there wasn't really much guidance when you went to varsity because yeah. you're coming from an from an oh, enclosed okay. small environment yeah right and like Boss I started, a whole new world I eh? studied in Johannes I studied at Wits okay and I'm from Peter Marisburg and the furthest I had been before that was Dublin oh that's yeah so, so me, the whole like, world opened up to a whole big metropolis was, yeah I mean it was an adjustment huge adjustment so it was very difficult to make that leap but uh, you, you learn I mean you you adapt you, when you leave home I think that was one of the best things that yeah. happened in terms of an experience Okay. In terms of studying away for yourself, from yeah, yeah, and I always tell like all the students and stuff who come to me, you know, when they do their their, their electives, or, oh, okay, I always advise them, you know, if you're gonna put yourself in a small box, if you're from Natal and think you're gonna be only in Natal, you're gonna miss out on a whole lot. That's true, so actually. Always yeah, get yourself in that, get out of the comfort zone, yeah, in a way. that's yeah. exactly what it is, or yeah. what you think your comfort zone is, you know. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out, yeah, not that just, the world will be passing by, not just on by. academics, just on everything, yeah. And then, like, One that's where you get social anxiety and... Because that's essentially that's, what happens. Yeah, because you're only exposed to one exactly. type of people. Yeah. And then, in, even in your career, you go and you meant to do something and you, you don't know how. Yeah. Or you don't have That's a dis- great disadvantage, exactly. uh, which I noticed. Yeah. It's like stuck in their own box and... Exactly. And it's not... I'm not even talking about the medical. I'm talking about anything. Any, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like your, your passion on this. That's how I found you on Instagram because I see you posting stuff of uh, medical science and you know how to sort out and you make those things yeah. which takes a lot of time also. Yeah. And I didn't realize normally I see these things in like the US US doctors and I never really see South African doctors doing that. So when I saw you doing them, I'm like, hey, I have to get, you know, get him on my podcast to talk because I can see the passion is there. He want to talk about anything in terms of helping people and so on. And that's what I liked about you, you know, when I saw you on you. Instagram. So what I realized is just putting the unfortunate fact is that that people respond to i mean if somebody had to put a dancing video on yeah you'll see you'll get a million people seeing that's what that we were saying that and or, or or kardashian does something yeah. and then it's uh, you know and it, where, the exposure where, is huge a lot of people put on hey this is what happens when you had covid this is what happens when you smoke three people okay, yeah will respond. exactly so i've tried to do that so you do i tried to do it in a in a funny not, not in a funny in a more humorous and more, relatable yeah way. yeah relatable so way this, if i see something i'll try to put it on yeah like in a comedic way but with a serious you can tell like with a serious like message. how people of today will respond to things exactly. in a meme or so yeah. on so yeah meme so that, yeah. that's literally how i try to get my message across and then for the more serious stuff like for covid that's when it started yeah oh, okay right so we literally everything shut down yeah and i can say it was a week before we saw so we're literally sitting in this room twiddling our thumbs we had no patients wow no anything literally everything was shut down it was like a ghost town there were no mm. cars there were no people the only people that could move around were essential the essential workers like the only yeah, other car you see on the road is you passing a doctor friend going oh yeah. it was so, like that then, yeah but then when it hits it hit like a ton of it yeah yeah like oh then the, the practice was like and overflowing then it was just, well you couldn't see people yeah it was just in the room that's why there's a couch here because i used to have to sleep here at night you serious? Yeah, you couldn't go home on some nights. Wow. Are you finishing at 11 in the night? You can't... And this is like almost every day? Every day for months. That is intense. And for like two of the... Two of the so of how was it like on your, uh, you know, mentality at that point, your mental health? Uh, still, that affected everyone, even even me. Hey, I 
can't say that I'll ever be the same. Yeah. So I had COVID four times. Even my physical health is not, wow. and it's never going to be what it was. At that at that point where it was like really after the first because you worked, worked, worked. No matter what um, prophylaxis you had on, uh, almost everyone worked. You got it. So you just you you were and here. It was severe. I mean, I that that was the time that. So I the first time you got it, were you like scared about having it and? I mean. I mean that's your line I of knew work. We were gonna get it. I I knew I was gonna get it. It was because you specialize in the lungs and so yeah. on. So that's like your. So I didn't doubt that it was gonna happen. Yeah. It's just I was hoping it wouldn't have been as severe. But yeah, I got it pretty bad. So uh, like okay, coming from the COVID point, how were you? Because since you specialize in it and you're listening to all these things online and uh, there's a lot of misinformation, how did you like respond to that and take that in? So. So. We so my colleagues and I from from Joburg we have a group a pulmonologist group and obviously everybody in the country, so you can, so you have that knowledge base, so based on like, you know when SARS was here you know the, the the previous viral infection oh yes or when the yes the swine flu yes. epidemic yeah, yeah so you all the information and treatment initially was based on those diseases oh, okay right. That's how it presented clinically, but obviously this was a more severe form. Yeah. And the spread was a lot more... A lot faster, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot, it was a lot more contagious. So you can tell when somebody is saying, take this, this, you know it's not going to work. Oh, okay, okay. Right. I don't want to know about that part. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, obviously when the medication came out and these doctors say it uses... A, like, you try it, you do your own little... Time, yeah. You can see it's not working or harming the patient. You have to, because we were really working in the... And did you tell a few of them, like, please stop doing that... Whatever you're taking. Yes, yes. Yeah. But, I mean, most of the people don't listen. Because I know they, a lot of them came up with these home remedies. Uh, I think there's a whole garlic thing going on at one stage. And there's quite a lot. And the steaming, they would steam like three there or four times a day. And the horse tranquilizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of that. A lot of, the, a lot of our colleagues in this area were, were punting that and saying, and when the vaccines came out, they're saying that the vaccines were a hoax. So it was very difficult oh. going up against all of that. Yeah, there's a lot because as I said, there's so much of misinformation. You're not sure if it's coming from a political, like from the US, how they're putting it through, whether it's marketing from the drug companies. Everything is political <laughs> and everything is money making, unfortunately. That's true, there's, yeah. There's nothing that can't be traced down to. So you think the, this COVID coming, we could have stopped it before it went so mainstream? No. Or? I no. don't think I don't think that part. I, I just think how it was the media. Oh, okay. How it was manip- Look, I think, to be honest, fear mongering. If South Africa did really well. Yeah, yeah definitely. I out for yeah, we government did. with all its with all the issues and stuff. Yeah. I mean the way the president, and how volatile we are sometimes. We yeah, listen and we did. But the way did. the president handled that. Yeah. You know when the lockdowns happened and when I mean it was one of you could say look look at all the other countries. He really took the advice of his medical advice. That's advisors. true. Well, he actually um, did listen. Right, when the lockdowns happen, yeah. how, when to come up, which levels. I mean, you're not going to get it 100%, right? Yeah, but compared but to what closer. happened in the States, what happened in China, in the UK, what happened and in the, the UK. Yeah, it's a I lot. Mean, I they didn't the listen. Death toll would have been a lot higher if it wasn't for. Yeah, I and mean, we were yeah. seeing the same thing. Like, he actually, we, we actually felt like safe and comfortable where he said, okay, we're going down for, you know, yeah. three weeks, and then from there yeah. we'll unlock and certain as much levels. as our economy suffered, I mean, obviously we were still, we were in a bad way before that, and yeah. now then. So. Yeah, so, and remember also, those, the PCRs yes. were developed in South Africa. Oh, Many people don't here. realize. Yeah, that. I didn't realize it either. So the PCRs were, were from our TB PCRs. Oh. Which we also created. So they modified that. But we didn't hear much of that exactly. uh, anyway. Exactly, so you don't get, so it's the Americans <laughs> will get all the, but. Yeah, they got all the credit for everything. Is, yeah, even the rapid tests and all of that. It was developed here. Yeah. I've never known so that the, until so now. So the quick turnaround for <clears throat> for the yeah. COVID PCR was was developed from I SA. I had no idea. Using, well, modifying <coughs> technology we already TV had. PCR. It's a DNA test. Oh, so okay. that's what the PCR stands for, polymerase chain reaction. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they detect an organism's det- DNA. Right. So and how it multiplies. So we, we started that here. And then they bought it from us, with the pattern well, from I us. I think it was... The idea came from me. I don't. I don't know the details, but I know that okay. Because we already had essay. that type yes. of thing. Because we had, we had the population base. Yes. And we had the tests. Oh, and, uh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, I'm hope a lot more people see this because yeah. that we. And it was actually too many in years. KZN. So, really? Yeah. Well, even better for us. Cause, I mean, cause, you know. Yeah, because um, all the the HIV and TB treatments and trials. Yeah. From, in fact, all over the world are done in SA. Serious? Yeah. No idea. People don't know that. So Canada, the US, the UK. So we do the trials in KZN? Yeah, because that's where the patients are. 
Wow, that's Remember, a good point. Remember, they'll have one TB case in what a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have one. We have more people. One in that, five. So with so all the trials, yeah. Yeah. We're so important in the medical uh, industry, but yes. we, we don't get spoken about. So all these drugs that are created are, are on our, are on our yeah. patients, on African patients. And it's more than just having the patients. We have the, the specialists or the doctors who actually do it. Correct. Correct. So I think we need to be spoken about uh, in a more yeah. higher standard because people have a lower uh, um, opinion of KZN and people don't even know Durban. And yet yeah. we're doing so much in the medical industry. Exactly. It's just, it's just unfortunate there is such... There's such a huge discrepancy between the private and the public sector. It's, yeah. You know, there's and there's such disconnect. Yeah, yeah, you know, true. And, and where the government has failed and still continues to fail is to bridge that gap. Oh, okay. Right? Now, they've passed that NHI bill. Yeah. And every doctor, there is no doctor in SA who knows that there is no infrastructure. For, to complete that, yeah. how the NHS is. For example, is. you saying, you know what? Let's, how, how do I put this? Um... Let's make every car in South Africa a smart car. Oh, but we right. can't, we don't have No, the... but, and you pass the bill. Yeah, right. And then you, people are like, what, where's the money coming from? Oh, Who's going to run it? Where the special... I That's see. literally how the NHI is currently. There is no money to fund it. So there's no infrastructure for it, but the bill has been passed. The bill has been passed. So, and unfortunately, people think that, you know what, I mean, I mean, I don't have medical aid, I'm in public health. Once the NHI is passed, I'm immediately going to be able to go to any private hospital. Oh, Again, that's what they that feel. Doesn't it work. doesn't work. No. So both the public sector yeah. and the private sector are both going to. It has to merge. Yeah, but if they don't merge yeah, in such a way. Because they want me private medical funders out of this. Oh, I and see. And then the medical funders are saying we should be working hand in hand. Yeah. If government comes in and we come in, we can provide the service to everybody. Right. But, but how long do you think we'll take to get there? Like realistically? Without corruption? Without, yeah. I'm just calling it as it is. Yeah. Without all of that, ten years. Ten years. Maybe, maybe, maybe eight. So it's the same. To develop uh, it. I'm talking about from. Oh, okay, from, from zero. Na, from okay. From, without okay. any interruptions and just uh, maybe they can do it in five. Yeah. But that's without corruption. And that's like working with, really hard on and it. And that's working very hard. And everybody, like all, working all the together stakeholders. The same goal. Uh, and the private and the public sector have to be together. That's the only way it'll work. Okay, let, let's say there's uh, like a perfect scenario, it works now, right? And they've done all the, the work, there's no corruption and this NHI bill has been passed and it's working. What problems do you think can come up from that? So the way it seems, is, so the easiest way to explain this as I understand it, which is still very confusing, but yeah. at one of our last big meetings, we, in one of our ethical talks was purely for the NHI. So, a, so one of the medical lawyers who are involved in all this tried to explain it. So, in the private sector, say you are given, let's take an arbitrary amount, 25,000 rands right. by your funder for an illness to do what... So, this is a medical funder to. now? Yeah, private. Okay. Right. What the NHI is proposing is that every person, private or public, gets, say, 6,000 points or 6,000 rands to do anything. That's, oh. So, if you come in with a chest infection, that 6,000 rand has to cover your primary doctor... Oh, your I get physiotherapy, what you mean. Right. your bronchoscopy. If I find cancer in your liver, yeah. it has to cover that. Wow. So where is all of the, you know, where? Oh, I get what you. Because half the time yeah. you come in for a problem, and you are treated for something completely different. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So if you if you coming in for a cough, and you've got this, and I find that you have a heart failure. Yeah. And that so you now all treat. of a sudden you need a bypass. I need to get other people on board. Yeah. You know? So what? What? So they're proposing you do everything with that same cost of what? Yeah, but, and then that. But even that money doesn't exist. That small amount. Yeah. So they're reducing the sort of, they're reducing the the box. Okay, I for, get what for you For everyone. Mean. Yeah. To give a broader cover, which doesn't necessarily mean you're going to give a person better care. Yeah, definitely. So I think the the, the standard of care that we have will actually drop. Will actually drop. And what I think is, they. They need more doctors. So the more doctors they have, they will spread that over. And they don't want to use South African doctors. They want to import Cuban, Cuban doctors, doctors. Yeah, which I've seen. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Because there are people, I can tell you, there are so many people after mm. their ComServe have no jobs. Mm. They want to specialize. Even as doctors. They want to specialize. The posts are there. Yeah. But they are reserved because of 
Okay. You know, not uh, getting. Unfortunately, we using we still using racial criteria yeah. and not academic criteria to oh, get into Oh yeah, that's true. Post. Yeah. So it's still it's, it's still that it, way. It's still right. Nobody talks about it. Yeah. But it's there. Like nobody it's will want to say. Yeah. It, it's a reality. It's reality. Right. Because they they say the brain drain, the amount of. Yeah. <laughs> Like people and then we're hearing about it for years. Yeah. yeah. But nobody talks about it. Nobody wants to. Media, you know, they yeah. just squash that. They squash all those. Yeah. So where do you think, like our, let's say, you know people that when after you from, uh, came from university, you know many students that finished medical school went to other countries. Where are they really going to? China, Mauritius. Like that's like the predominant and the places. Mm. Wow. But even when they get back, they, they aren't seen as doctors in the country. Are you they serious? They still do the equivalent of the sixth final year write the exams, then do a board exam, wow. and then still do the internship and comes out. Is it because our standard of education is higher or what's the... It the is. Reason? Yeah, I would say our standard of education is higher. Our our degrees, I don't know how it works now, but our universities used to be ranked pretty high. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, the world. yeah. I know that. And I think they were using comparative... So, oh, that's how. So that. I think regardless of where you study, that's how it is. So just as how if you want to go to Australia, you have to do an entrance exam. And yes. So that's our... But if you qualify as a doctor in another country, you're not seen as a doctor until you... You have to complete those the extra... final year and stuff, yeah. The, the medical in- industry has a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of loopholes, there's a lot of, of, lot of yeah. red tape and stuff to, to go through. There's a lot that needs to be yeah. fixed before, yeah. Damn, it's a lot. And so your uh, specialization, so, okay, like how you took me through it before, let's take everyone else through it because it's it's a lot to know. And as we said, we take the medical industry for granted. The doctor is there, we just call him, we go to get treated, we get an injection, whatever, and it's done. But we need to know how it works so that we, when we don't get treated, that we don't lose our minds and shout at everyone because we want to take it. Like, they're human too. Like, you know, we're having a chat here about where you came from and so on and how you decided to choose this. So I want everyone to kind of know like how it works when you become a a specialist physician and then to a super specialist. Maybe take us in uh, the most basic way. (laughs) Okay. So in South Africa, we we follow the UK uh, sort of medical training. Uh, So I'll talk with the United States. That's that's completely different. So if you see the medical shows that are primarily US based, yeah. I'm saying Grey's Anatomy. Right. Okay, that's really not real and what happens in your life. So but anyway they do the equivalent of a of a science course for four years and then at that four years you decide what you want to do. So if you want to do a cardiology, you will only do cardiology. Right. So when you are a doctor, you are a cardiologist and nothing else. If you are a pediatrician or a gynecologist, that's all you you, you okay. don't train in anything else. Whereas in SA and the UK for your six years of medical school training, you have to do everything. You rotate through gynecology, pediatrics, orthopedics, mm. internal medicine, surgery. So your final exam at your sixth year is all of those. And wow. you have to pass everything before you are called a doctor. Every single thing. Everything. You can't fail any module. Or you have to repeat. And then you're a physician. No, no, no. Then you're a doctor. Then you're a doctor. Well. Right? Then you're <laughs> an more. intern. Right? Okay. So South Africa, currently you have to do two years of internship. So that's two years, two years of internship. That's right. mandatory. After the six years of study, After six two years, years of two inter- years of mandatory, and yeah. then one year of community service. Oh wow! Where your responsibilities really increase, and so you don't get paid for that. No, you do. Oh yeah. Okay, Intern, you get paid. Yeah, right. service. The pay now is a lot better than when you first than, started. Then obviously when it started, you know they try to improve. So yeah, but I mean you work hard as an intern, and it, again it depends where you go. In the central hospitals, you have medical officers, registrars, consultants. You can learn a lot. If you're unlucky enough or lucky enough, depends on how you see mm. it, as a as a community service officer, you get a lot more responsibility. So if you put out in the Bundu somewhere, yeah. somewhere in a clinic in Mapumulo, in right. Drakensberg, you're a medical officer. I mean, you are seen as a medical officer. So oh, okay. if you are good at gynecology, you will do gynecology. You are the senior doctor on site. Oh, wow. Even it's your concept. first time doing it. Well, obviously, you'll have need some experience. But yeah, yeah that's going to be... That's basically it. Yeah, so that's how you... If you you can do basic surgeries, um, you know that. Wait, oh, like so, like a general really surgeon as a community service doctor. Okay. Right? And a lot of people find that's what they love doing. Oh. It's like you know what I went here, I did this. I was doing appendectomies. I was delivering babies. All right, I want to be yeah, an gynecologist, yeah. or I want to. So, oh, so they actually find yeah. themselves in that way. In Correct. Terms of, oh. And then after your community service, then you get a certificate to say you are an independent practitioner. Right. So then you can decide what you want to do with your medical career. Oh, okay. So if you want to stop your studying, you can become a GP, open up a private practice, and you can do diplomas in 
anesthetic, so pediatric. So just oh, so to they can further go your into, knowledge. Right, yeah, I but see. That, that's not a speciality, it's a diploma. It's to further your basic knowledge. Okay, okay. Um, so you can't really use that for anything. No, you can. You can. You can like in, uh, you can if a diploma in anesthetics. So the, because there are so many anesthetists now, it's not really done. Back in the day, anesthetists were Oh, I that, see. Yeah. I mean, there weren't that many. They so were the GPs used to do their diploma in anesthetics, so they oh, could they, be the anesthetists. Oh. So it was out of necessity. And this is in South Africa. Yes, yes. Wow. They still got the older GPs with their with their DAs. I mean, they're as good as consultants. You oh, know? okay. That's how experienced they are. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, or you can work in a state facility. So you are a medical officer. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of people, a lot of doctors go into research. So they go into privately funded research. Okay. And they, they don't do the practice. No, no. So, so it's only research. Just so research. They were, so they got a cohort of patients, and that's those are the. And then they go and recruit, and then they are paid by. Oh, okay. Running. The research so has a facility the and so on. The AstraZeneca is doing a TB oh, okay. study via Harvard. Right. So you get a contract. Oh, that's where. Them. Okay, that that's quite. That's where uh, all these lot of sense. come out from. Right? Yeah. And then, uh, so if you want to specialize, you have to apply for. A resident, so we call it registrars. Yeah. Americans call it residents. So oh, that's the residents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you apply for pediatrics or obstetrics. So mine was internal medicine. We call oh, it. Oh, okay, internal so medicine. To become a physician, it's called internal medicine. Right. So if you're lucky enough to get a post, and that's in a training. So UKZN, Wits, um, Cape Town, Pretoria. Okay. Orange Free State. So to do, to do the, the physician part of it now? So yeah, or your surgery or whatever you want. Right. So that's four years. It's okay. always four years. So each thing you choose, it's, it's four years. It's four years. Wow. <laughs> right. So at the end, you have however many exams you need to do. Um, you have to do a research module with yeah. that, a master's with that. Oh, so it's mandatory together. in South Africa. Yeah. It's a lot of study. It's a lot of stuff. So then at the end of it, you become a fellow in your respective field. Okay. So mine will be a fellow of the College of. So it's going to be a fellow. Yeah. So That's so it's... yeah. So you're a specialist. Okay. So you're part of a community. Oh, of your okay. Field. I see. <laughs> so that's why you call a fellow right. of a college of. I had no idea. Yeah. All these things. And then, if you wanna stop there, yeah. then you can be in a state facility that has specialists. Oh, so you'll be a specialist in a state facility. In a state facility, like yeah. a training, like Albert Lutuli is our training facility. So okay. Be, but it's very hard to get a post in any of that. Yeah. Um, so I know even when I qualified, there were no posts. Really? Yeah, they had to create training posts for us wow. to sort of specialize. That's how bad it that's was. What, uh, well, that's what rare it is, I guess. So they had to create stuff. And then so I decided I wanted to do pulmonology and critical. Yeah. Care, so that was another three years. Oh, it was another three years above of that. that. You do another exam and then you... Yeah. So like that, that's what you call a super specialist. Well, what made you go into that particular uh, dealing so, with the lungs and so breathing? So I really liked critical care, right? okay. which you can do as a separate speciality, but yeah. then you can't really do much else. You, so I wanted to do both. So oh, general right. medicine, yeah. pulmonology, and this is the only speciality that lets you do ICU as well. Oh, okay, right, I so see. I like, so so you can be all around. Yeah, can, yeah, You can actually have a lot of patients in that critical care Correct. aspect. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's a lot lot of years of study, man. Yeah. Is it safe to say that South African doctors are like one of the best in the world? They were rated. I mean, again, it's, it's personal. It's, it's what you make of it. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, the, the talent. So this is the work ethic also is a like, yeah, but, but very I mean, high just level. In terms of the, of the colleagues and my, and my peers and my seniors and stuff, yeah, I would say, geez. Yeah. I mean, the people you learn from, they are like the professors and stuff. They are, when you speak to them, you can see you they, can, are, yeah. they are learning. And they, they in they their, their field. Yeah, and so I would definitely say, yeah. Yeah, because it feels like that. Because when we were in the UK, and that time they got the NHS bill passed, and uh, you know, when you get get the flu, you stay at home, you have to get all these, see the doctor and stuff. But we couldn't see doctors, and so many teachers had problems; they couldn't find doctors at all. So prior to Brexit, yeah, um, uh, UK used to recruit doctors from SA. Really? Yeah, there was a huge exodus of guys. So after the community service, going to Ireland and oh, the UK, I'm okay. sure you have friends and yeah. who. Yeah, they, they spent years there because they got paid better. Yeah. The hours were better. And so you, when you come back, you could start your family. Right, And okay. then specialize if you yeah, wanted to. Yeah, if you to. wanted to. And be comfortable. Yeah, so, so given the opportunity. obviously after, you know, all the stuff, they sort of... Also, they stopped that. No well, they, they stopped recruiting. It's, it's harder now to get... Oh, okay, okay. As far as it's not as like as uh, yeah. how it was when it first started. Before, it's like, a rec- like you just go via an agency and you're like almost guaranteed. 
Oh, okay, now you know, it's different. Work there, yeah, you know, Ireland, UK. Uh, now people are going. If they're going, it's more permanent. Oh, okay, right. You know? So they'd like uh, getting they the place. Yeah, they're moving. Yeah, moving. They're not yeah. from a recruiter point of view. Correct. Oh. Yeah, I can see that's. Uh, I'm sure they want South African doctors because of the level that you guys work here. I mean, in all hospitals, we said we came here. It was uh, nonstop. And you're busy all the time, and uh, you know people are walking in. It's a, I don't know how you manage that in terms of anxiety. What do you do? You feel like uh, you're anxious all the time, or is it just a part of you right now? Not really. It's a part of you. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's the the waking up with any like slight vibration of your phone. So we had. I mean, so I mean, you're not in a, in a sp- uh, sleep, full sleep. No, that's that's. So even when my son was born, they were like, "Oh, sleepless nights." So I mean. <coughs> Really, waking up for him wasn't. I mean, you're tired, but yeah. it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't something new, if you know what I mean. Right, I see. Yeah, I'd like I'd prefer to wake up to him crying than yeah. my, my cell phone ringing. To be honest, <laughs> so you get that. The anxiety comes from the fact that you can't uh, take leave when you want to. You can't oh. just say I don't want to go into work. Yeah, if you're sick. You so kind of like that sharp feeling work. in a way. Yeah. So my colleague that I'm admitting that you just saw just yeah. now. I mean, he's still thinking about what he's going to do about his patients tomorrow. Wow. So it never ends. It can't. I mean, you if you lucky enough to be in a in a partnership or a yeah. conglomerate, then yeah. You so someone cover else can somebody. cover you. But yeah, for most of us we are on our own. So you guys have like the resilience is on another level. You have to, be, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not easy. It's not something yeah. that you think about either. Like now, I'm talking to you about it, and it just it just seems a lot. Like I was feeling trapped when you're hearing. Okay, you're always in a light sleep, even if you're sick. If to come, you you're only taking off for your this week because for your birthday uh, but no other you reason when you're, you feel it with, with your family you know yeah when, can when imagine says on a weekend it's like the one day that you don't have to go in early it's yeah like, you know and so then you realize geez what an impact it has um then you start to yeah, realize so that. a lot of people yeah so yeah. a lot of the weekenders like you know you, you don't have that luxury yeah oh so even if you're not on call you're still coming so you're off but you're never really off yeah oh, okay so i get what you mean yeah, yeah. so you're always like so uh, you thinking to, so that's the that's the trade-off i mean that's that's yeah, that's what you. I know with like choose to do with the anxiety, like you know, with uh, always talking to people about these type of things, because that's what I talk about mostly on, on the the podcast. And with people that deal with anxiety, like they say that the the amygdala grows, and um, they always in that that alarm is always going off for them, and we don't know what to do. We talk to psychologists and we talk to doctors and so on, but for you, do you talk to anyone, or is it something that you? Uh, you know. So the important thing here is to, to realize the difference between anxiety and an anxiety disorder. Right. Right. I mean, everybody gets anxious, otherwise yeah, you're yeah, yeah. human. Yeah. But some with mental health, it becomes a disorder when it disrupts your normal functioning of day to day. Okay. That's a basic definition of what it is. So like a panic attack? Um, yeah, you can get a panic attack yeah. or a panic disorder, you see? Okay. So, see okay, I get what you mean. Right. 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 So if I'm afraid to go and start my car because... I'm scared I'm going to get... That's a disorder. Okay. Right. So like yes, normal yes. functioning. Normal functioning. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm anxious. Like, so it's... I can say I feel burnt out. Yeah, so okay. So that's... In, in the right, night, right. if I'm looking at the next day, like, oh, this this is what I'm going to see. And I know I'm going to finish at this time. And when, when do you fit in family time and dinner and your, you know, gym? And when, you, you know, so that that's where the anxiety part comes in. But it's okay. this... But I can. But say, that's like a constant. Yeah, it's the constant every yeah. evening. But you reach a point like so. Say if you so yeah, your sick patients you worry about them. Yeah. But I can say in the moment of trying to do something for that patient, no, everything else, it's. I mean, just so you're like quiet. in the moment. So yeah, everything in else the present is out, moment. Like okay. All ambient. Yeah, yeah. Is out and you focus you're dealing on with that. The patient. Yeah. Okay. So there's anxiety is different too. Yeah, your your work stress is something else. Yeah, I have to make this time. Okay, like, right. I you see. know, the, always the joke is you sit for hours in a doctor's room. But, yeah. but why? Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, unfortunately, people expect you to spend an hour with them in ten minutes. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. that's a good point. Because right. you, you want, want a, everything, you want but you want a short doctor, t- Yeah. But if you, you if your doctor spend their time with a patient, you're not happy to wait. Yes. Yeah. If you're doing that and somebody else... They should wait for you. You can't. There are only yeah. so many hours in a day. You That's get. true. I would love to 100%. spend more time with my patients, yeah. but you prioritize. Do people complain about that? Yeah, all the time. Really? Every day. But they understand. So I explain to my patients, I say, I would love to spend more time with you. Yeah. And when I do get a chance, 
what I do, write down your questions, write down your concerns. Because when you're speaking to a doctor, we yeah. are just flying off. You forget half the things you want to ask. Oh, my husband said to ask you this. <laughs> All right, so right. I tell him, write it down. Yeah. And then, you know, when I'm not spending as much time in ICU, right, let's sit down and go to it. Oh, okay. So, okay. Always what so I you do sure accommodate on, them. On my first consult with a patient, yeah. it's very long because we do everything. Okay. And then everything else follows that, right? You're coming in for this problem. This is what I found. Yeah. Okay. You can't make everybody happy all of the time. You know, sometimes you just... That's true. It's human nature, be it in medicine or not. Some people you just can't gel with. Yeah, yeah, person. yeah, yeah, true. You just you just can't, no matter what you do or try to do. And then obviously, again, we're human. Sometimes we have bad days and sometimes we may be grumpy. You try yeah. not to. I well, mean, okay. As I, far yeah. as what you want. As but, a I mean, yeah, human nature. Nobody I know will intentionally harm or be... I mean, we do get the exception. <laughs> want to harm Definitely. a patient. That's, that's okay. what our, yeah. Right, I see. Yeah, but looking at your your super specialist is the pul- pulmonology, and I was like very curious as to uh, firstly why you got into it, and what do you notice in terms of you know the breathing uh, capacity of people and uh, you know asthma having all those things, and how does it affect their daily lives, and why they should sort out their breathing? Because I was reading this one thing. I'm not sure if I read it or watched a, a podcast on it, but there's this breathing es- expert guy, and he he said. We should always breathe through our nose. Like we shouldn't, you know, something with sinuses, our mouth is open, breathing through our mouth. That causes more harm than anything else. And it even changes the way our face is shaped. And he went into like, you know, a whole rabbit hole of uh, scenarios. Mm. So I want to know in terms of the breathing part, as to what extent it affects our lives. So firstly, I don't know who, who this person is yeah. or what he said. I'll, I'll get, get you the no, link. Unless you have some sort of, Oral issue. Yeah. You're not really going to do any harm by breathing through your through your mouth. I mean, okay. that's what it's designed to do. Yeah. Right? I mean, breathing. To let in oxygen. Talking, yeah. yeah. I mean, in order for you to talk, air has to pass through your vocal cords. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hence, if you try to speak in a vacuum, there is nothing that's going right? so right, yeah. to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to breathe to talk. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking most of the time. So it yeah. doesn't make sense. You, you, it cannot change the shape of your face. Yeah. So let me get that's all what of he, those. He went into all those, you know. There are exceptions. Yes. If, but he's not a doctor. Yeah. No, he's some journalist. Like yeah, he's a journalist or so something like that. I wouldn't put like much that. stock in that. Yeah. So yes, if you can't breathe through your nose, there's a problem. Mm. Not with breathing through your mouth, but the fact that you can't breathe through your nose. <laughs> you can't breathe through the... That means... With breathing especially, so... And I tell my patients, it's human nature. If you can breathe and you, you can carry on with your day-to-day, you tend to ignore your respiratory system. True. It's very different to when you have a cardiac issue or you think you have a cardiac issue. Oh, okay. If you have chest pain, yeah. you want to get to a cardiologist. Yeah, automatically something If you have happen. a cough or wheeze, it'll be three months before you think that's causing an issue. <laughs> Even if you have asthma, am I right? Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it is important. I mean, it's such a broad topic. I mean, you're, like everything, your body is a complex machine. Mm. I think about your car. Every part needs to work for it. For it to be running smoothly. Your body That's is true. the same. Yeah. Right. Your 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 lungs need to work, your heart needs to work, everything. So you need to be fit and healthy. Easier said than done. Yeah. Right. I mean unfortunately people do a lot of things except eat healthy and yeah. exercise. <laughs> Smoking mm. and electronic nicotine devices, yes. you call it yes. Yeah. Yeah. Vaping. Yeah. Are the bane of our existence. <laughs> right. It's I've done endless talks on emphysema. Oh yeah. And then now to trying to get the message across that these the, the electronic cigarettes are no more safe. Right. Right with the complications. So, so do, do you think we'll follow a suit with the New Zealand and the UK by banning cigarettes? No. You don't think we will? How come though? Political. Oh. Purely. Yeah. Um especially not with the elections coming. Right, I see. Uh, no other reason. Yeah. For me, I, I'm not but a from politician. a doctor's point of view, it should I should wish, be yeah. Yeah. Look, again, it's not as easy. Again, this is it. Just place a ban. Uh, for me, you can't go from allowing something so oh, widespread, easily yeah. accessible and then saying no. Mm. People are not going to accept that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And smokers are very, very protective of their cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Of their I know. <laughs> like, even with alcohol and other stuff, I can find, yeah, stock, I can cut down to get. But when you tell a smoker, like, you know, the ones, you need to cut down and stop. It's like, you, it's like, Majority, you'll yeah, be, you'll eating a, a brick it's like, wall. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, even coming up here, you'll find... Oh, yeah, I saw a guy smoking. outside standing and smoking. No, but with their IV lines. Yeah, really? They're sick. They can't walk. And they're walking outside to Whoa. smoke. And for me, it's like, 
I'm very strong about that. Yeah. I tell my patients, you have a choice. You want me to treat you? If you're going to walk outside and smoke, I'm sending you home. Yeah, well. And they're like, oh, but how? I'm like, if you can walk outside to smoke, yeah, you do not need to be admitted. You can't tell me you're sick and you can't breathe if you're going to do that. I tell them, oh, they come in with the chest problem, but they still got to smoke. Yes, they can't <laughs> stop. I said, I understand it's hard, but you can't have it both ways. Yeah, that's true. Right? I, I, you just, it doesn't make sense. But what do you think? You know, how, how would someone uh, just stop smoking? Look, it's not easy. Yeah. Again, I told, I said, I know it's not easy, but so there are, you know, these these medications that were created, um, the two, I'm calling them by the trade, Zyban and Champix, right? Right. So they were modified from psychiatric drugs. Oh, wow. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, for drugs that were Did made I from bipolar there? and depression. Yeah. Because it changes your brain neurochemistry. So modified in slightly dosage and what it's attached to, but essentially they're meant to decrease that craving. Yeah. When, especially the newer one, that the way it was designed is that to be given in certain doses to a patient who's going to be sitting with a, I call it a sponsor, you know, like how you get in. Oh, yes, yes. So somebody who's a non-smoker and your GP who was trained. Okay. So every week, right, you're on 20, then you're going to go to 18, then 15. Wow. So as the cigarettes go down, the pills go up and then you balance it. Balance it. it. It's quite extensive. Yeah, no, it, that's how it was. Unfortunately... When it was, it was just prescribed to the patient. Yeah. And that was it. So they were taking it and the psychological side effects of it. Oh. Patients were becoming violent, aggressive. Really? Suicidal. And not just like, oh, I'm feeling... We're taking I mean, it on their own, on like yeah, to their own devices. Yeah, no help. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, right. whoa. So to date, I have not met a patient who's quit smoking on those meds. So I've While never, on the meds? Yeah. I've never prescribed it. Mm. Because we, in Durban especially, we just don't, nobody's trained. Oh, None okay. So, so it's not no, just you can't just give it out. Yeah. You have to be trained with the yeah. whole. So there's right. South African guidelines by one of the professors. Like you know, he has cessation, smoking cessation guidelines. What you should do, where to get help, how you're gonna do it. So, so, so quitting smoking is quite an intense. It's uh, not easy circumstance. But when you have a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or you in ICU and you're gonna be on oxygen. Yeah. Or you need a bypass and all of this from smoking. For me. So are those two linked: the the heart attack and the smoking. So smoking doesn't, so all the toxins you inhale. Yeah, right? from the cigarette itself. Yeah, remember that's going in, into your lungs, into your bloodstream. Right? These cause changes in your entire, what we call endovascular system. So it's very complicated, but essentially, you know, people have heard of free radicals. Yeah, yeah, all the in your blood. And yeah, you know, Make you age and stuff like that. Antioxidants, yeah, but those essentially cause cholesterol plaques. Oh, okay. So remember... Smokers invariably have diabetes. Yeah. Well, not invariably, but most of them. Most of them do. So they have, they have other risk factors. Diabetes, hypertension. They overweight. Yeah. They don't exercise. Yeah. They have family history of cardiac. All those, yeah, cardiac arrest. To add such. this onto yeah. it. So, I mean, you'll see the biggest cause of cardiac, the biggest modifiable risk factor for cardiac disease is cigarette smoking. Oof. So when I say modifiable, I mean something that you can The control. one thing you can take out of the equation. Correct. but yeah. So, yeah, it's a, especially like in our communities, I know that obviously cardiac arrest and uh, heart problems are like one of the biggest things we kind of deal with. That Not just deal with it. It's uh, not always people that are like really old. It's younger people too. No, it's, 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 in, it's any age. Don't say I'm going to stop smoking at 50 because the risk factors only start at 60. No. Yeah. So for your lungs, if people don't know, continue to grow. Your airways develop until you're 30 years old. Continue to develop. Yes. So if you're smoking at from 16. Yeah. Even younger. You're stunting the growth. Right. Then. Remember, whatever lung disease you have is going to manifest later in life because of that. And if you're smoking around your kids, I mean, for me, that's criminal. Mm. Because you're removing their choice. Oh, okay. But in the uh, right, inhaling. Day, yes. Or if you're smoking around your partner, I mean, yeah, you're taking away their choice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess because you you choosing to do it, but they yeah. around you just exactly. inhaling uh, yeah. it in. So let's say there's a person that uh, finding it difficult to quit smoking, but they want to exercise. They they want to get the capacity of their lungs bigger. Is that a possibility? Yeah, you can. Like, smokers can exercise. I mean, you still. So it'll I still mean, it'll still work for but them. It doesn't balance out. Yeah, that's I guess so. Thing. Yeah. So again, it's like I'm gonna have a Big Mac with a Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you I understand? like that. <laughs> so yeah, you're gonna exercise. Yeah, you're going to maybe reduce the time to your first severe 
what we call an exacerbation. Oh. Remember, we're also genetically different. Yeah. You may smoke to 90 and have uh, minimal symptoms. I may be on oxygen at 60 years old. Oh, Again, okay. We're different. different. Yeah. And we may smoke exactly the same brand, the same amount, the same time of yeah. day, and have very different outcomes. The invariable fact is that smoking will always damage your lungs. Okay. But yeah. In always. Ways. Yeah. Why would you want to take that risk? That's true. But okay, so now the way, way we live in these, uh, especially countries like ours, you know, traffic is crazy all the time. There's always cars on the road and we're not anywhere close to having uh, as much as electric vehicles as the UK and so on. Yes. So I'm not a smoker, but I'm always exposed to carbon monoxide and different chemicals and stuff like that. Is it, would we say it's the same thing or is smoking still a lot worse? Smoking is the concentrated form of what you're talking about. You're doing yeah. that directly. I mean, Yes, the pollutants from, from vehicles is being diluted into the atmosphere and you're breathing that. So your proximity to this, I mean, you're not breathing out of an exhaust. That's the thing, right? It, the cars around here, we have trees. Yeah, oh, so they act that. as a filter, yeah, yeah, right. Think about that, Yeah, right? that's true. Again, it depends on population density when yeah. you're on the CBD. The Johannesburg CBD would be a lot more than, Belito. yeah, right. Right, pollution. But yes, it, it, it's a very big thing. Coming on to electric vehicles as well, remember, we are almost 100% uh, dependent on coal power, mm. right? So <laughs> even if electric cars are going to be the mainstay, it makes, we have to do something about, I'm big into this environmental sort yeah. of Yeah, okay, well, yeah, right. right. And for me, that's very important. If we are on coal power, yeah. all our charging stations are going to be charged by coal. Right. So you build more coal stations. So it's going to be to, a lot more. To, to generate power. So we really won't have the capacity. Car. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So you need a natural source. Yeah. But why do you think we're not we're source. not using the natural source? How come? Well, and South Africa was chosen at that summit years ago. Yeah. Uh, which summit was that? Government which, which, which shut it down. Oh. Because they were foreign investors. South Africa is prime place for, in terms of our solar, our, our ability to generate solar. That's a good point. Hydroelectric and yeah. wind. Really? Three. So geog geographically, we're geographically in the best uh, we position. Are one of the most unique countries in the world for that. Wow. <laughs> I had no idea that the way we were placed, but yet we're not using Our any of it. Our natural resources are just amazing, but it's only a very small select yeah. few people who like exploit that, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I can see that. Because we get so much of load shedding now, and it's insane uh, the way our country kind of went to this, and it's like normal. To have it and so so many i think like two generations of children have been born into low chilling is normal exactly. it's, and a, now, now it's, like light it's just one of those things it's and one of those things have to be yeah um and it's not like things are going cheaper yeah it's yeah like we're not paying for electricity or fuel prices have come down i mean that's true not at all we are Nothing. ahead of the inflation curve yeah in a bad way in a bad way yeah, yeah. we're ahead of something in a bad yes. way yeah yeah true because we have this uh, escom kind of increasing the rates all the time but i mean we were in joburg uh, last week and it goes, two hours it goes off, it stays on for like four hours, goes off. It was insane. I'm thinking, how do people even live here? It's and, all the time. And again, it's, it's only going to get worse because more and more so the demand for batteries are coming. All right. And lithium ion batteries need cobalt. Yeah. Cobalt is from, you, you saw those articles mine, yeah. about these mines. They have to mine, America, yeah. From children. Yeah. yeah in uh, which countries are those? It was, more north. Uh, yeah, north. There was, it was in Kenya. It's not it uh, Uganda. Yeah, it was Uganda. Yeah. Yeah. And also stuff. It's like, it's just... Yeah, it's so anywhere you turn, there's, there's, there's something. It's just, it's like... I know that these companies, uh, like especially the, the now these environmentally green companies, they saw these uh, these protesters in the US and stuff, they wear these orange shirts and they go out, uh, stop oil now protesters. Have you seen those where they throw exactly. these? Yeah, yes. it's quite insane. And uh, a part of it, when I did some research on that, they, they are funded by... Uh, these people that own Getty Images. So the granddaughter of the guy that owns Getty Images, he owns a big, uh, well, like an oil generating rig in Texas. He owned that many years. That's what they created their wealth. So she got into control of the company. She's the one paying the, the don't stop, or the just stop oil people right now that's going everywhere and doing all this, disrupting the world. And they also say that investors... Uh, your country or your, your business get these ESG scores. If the higher score your country has, the more investors it has. So I was trying to think, are we on that scale of the more load shedding we have, so the lesser coal we're burning, so we have a higher ESG score to get more investors. There's a weird conspiracy to go down, but I don't know whether it's linked in that way or whether it can be linked. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 
unfortunately, we're living in terms of everything that's done, everything that you see has a an agenda. Yeah, it's not a conspiracy; it's just fact. I that's mean, look true. at the wars that are going on mm. in this day and age. Yeah, to be exactly living true. on the brink <laughs> of World War World War Three. Yeah. I mean, how have we not learned anything? In exactly. Fact, it's worse. Definitely how worse. How are these atrocities? Like, yeah. Just, it's, it, I don't know. It's so you like uh, as much as we have like uh, technology like Chat GPT and we so we highly intelligent compared to you know the cavemen where we are now. I mean, but I it think feels intelligence like intelligence is relative. Eh? Yeah, definitely. That, that's <laughs> what I think. We may we may be. I think we have may have higher IQs, but that doesn't make us. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah, true. for me. There's yeah. a big difference. And yeah, people want to leave the planet when they're burning down this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have the power to plan B. It. Yeah, you do. We yeah, do. But you want to colonize another planet. Yeah, Vladimir Putin was uh, nominated for Person of the Year from Time Magazine, yeah. and he's a well-known war criminal. Yeah. So, so that I always, I've always followed Time and whatever. So they always said no, but how can you? So Person of the Year doesn't mean that. They're your favorite person of the yeah. year. They're the person has, who has been the most influential. Oh, old, he definitely he was then. That, yeah. Who has changed the way humanity goes forward in the future. Because with him, that's how the second war kind of started. Yes, yeah. Positive or negative. He led the way. Yeah. I mean, Kim Jong-un was uh, oh, yes. nominated yeah. a couple years yeah. ago when Trump <laughs> nominated. <laughs> not, for, not for anything possible. Yeah. So just, just the, the most influence. Yeah, I mean, the influence, I mean... That's dangerous when people have such dangerous. influence. It's always a, like, a, a scary part of things when uh, you've got no control over it, but this person is gaining traction so much exactly. in a so negative way. that happened with the last US administration has yeah. such severe knock-on effects. I mean, that war, the Russian war happened purely because of that. Yeah. Of the last president. I mean, that was allowed to happen. And once and he that left... That was a knock-on effect. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it was waiting. It was yeah, waiting. And then what's happening now... Yeah these people got more brazen because they can see, hey, this is happening. And nothing happened to them. Uh, the UN really, really doesn't have much power. Not at all. We've got the US <laughs> backing up. We can do whatever we want. Yeah. To. That uh, the new, one of the uh, new candidates in uh, the American elections, Vivek Ramaswamy, he he doesn't want to s- subscribe to the UN anymore. He's like, uh, they have no uh, power. They're not doing anything, paying them for no reason. And I think he's right. I don't see what uh, the UN is actually doing because there's, there's two hours at the moment. Nothing's happening. No, they're there for humanitarian aid. So they are there to transport. For me, they are there to transport. To tra- yeah. But they're not, they're meant to be peacekeepers. Yeah, essentially. They're yeah, they're not, I don't feel like they're doing... I don't think doing... they've been given the power for that. Maybe, maybe they haven't, yeah. yeah. Well, w- during this, uh, you know, the Hamas uh, attack and so on, one of the people in the UN, I think it was the, the Secretary General that uh, was talking, in t- and whenever whatever he said was more on the side of uh, the Hamas, you know, we're not going to use the word terrorists. And so people were like, why are you there? They wanted him to resign and stuff because he spoke more on one side than the other. But they say you are here to be a peacekeeper, not to kind of choose a side. Or So it's it's quite in- intense what's happening in the world and where we're living now. And I don't know what people need because it, a lot more, I think I was watching Sadhguru, you heard of Sadhguru? Mm-hmm. He was saying that we are on the the World Health Organization said we are on the brink of a mental health uh, yes. pand, uh, epidemic, and that's where it's looking at. Now two hours at the moment, and it's just insane. It it has an effect on everyone. I mean, yeah. coming out of COVID, to the Russian Ukraine war, to now, this. Yeah, and it's just, and nobody is saying anti-Semitic or anti this. Whether you're Christian, Jewish, yeah. Buddhist, you. It's if a war on you, people. If you are okay watching children yeah, yeah, die exa- exactly. and torture, yeah. I'm sorry, my friend, you have lost your soul. Mm. It doesn't matter what background, religion, or country you Because somehow they, like, uh, they would... Uh, no, it's just a blank. I just, I just don't know. Was there something in the water, the air, <laughs> that just took away their empathy? Yeah. yeah. Soldiers fighting soldiers, yes, that's horrendous, but that's one aspect. That, that's what happens. That is one yeah, aspect, yeah, it's one aspect, right? true. We'll never... War, I hate war, Yeah. but soldiers and soldiers... You know what? But this is something else. Totally different. Uh, this is not their choice. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, they just go in through it. And it's fast. And people are, they become so uh, blinded by the sides that they choose. They don't care what happens to the other side. So we're like, lo- are we like u- losing humanity in a way? I've lost it already. I think a lot of people have. Wow. Just, um, you can see, I mean, the, 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 uh, the countries and the leaders that you look to to prevent these things yeah the so-called leaders of 
Western and current civiliza- civilization. Civilization, yeah. I mean, we can't count them. Okay? Yeah, true. And how are they allowing it to happen? Because if we, they are the the big brother of everything Again, that's happening. Yeah, nobody is supporting any terrorists or any. Nobody is. Whatever happened on the seventh of October, yes, yeah, that is atrocious. That is, but that's not the way you do things. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So the the there should be a stand that they should take as the mm. people that are leading the world. Just like saying Hamas no is, has it. built tunnels under this hospital. Let me bomb. Let yeah. me bomb it. Doesn't matter who is in it. Yeah. But we told you to guys to go. Uh, it's not your fault. Yeah, you it's like it's not here. as black and white as but they say it is. it's not just that. I mean, people are proposing in front of their destructive. Have you seen that? Yeah. Just making TikTok videos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's that, that's I think uh, doing those things are it's like that, insane. That is atrocious. That, for me, but that's they, what uh, uh, Advocating for that type yeah. of violence. Yeah, that, that's... It's a whole other aspect in itself. the loss of human life. Exactly. They're not realizing that. People feel like if I choose a side, I'm cool. Yeah. As long as I've chosen one side, then I'll do everything I can to make the other side you look bad. You can choose a side. There's not, you choose a side, but it, you can't be okay yeah. with this. So it, it needs to be a lot of uh, like your own morality coming into place Correct. to say, how far am I choosing my side and to what yes. extent? And from what I can see, it's uh, from what you're saying with the TikTok videos, the people advocating for it, it's quite uh, yeah, but terrifying. You, it's, it's, it's celebrating atrocities. Yeah, yeah. But it's one thing committing them. But it, in the aftermath, you are celebrating it. Yeah, exactly. It's not okay. It's it's bad. It doesn't oh, matter which country, like I said, it doesn't matter what country or where you're from or what your beliefs. Yeah, are. definitely, it shouldn't be celebrated. Firstly, and, and, and the, the videos are put down. Now we're getting like desensitized by just looking at all this as if okay, just yeah. another one there's, of those. There's a, there's a thing called empathy fatigue. Yeah, is it? Yeah, so it's a real thing. Like where you are constantly bombarded, and they tell you 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 tell you you need to stop looking at this all the time. Yes, you have to be informed. But you cannot put your phone and look at this all through the day. This it is going to, it's going to have. So what can you do to you, like medically? It can change your whole brain biochemistry. Wow! You stop. You can stop functioning as how you would normally in your day to day life. It affects how you interact with your family, your colleagues, yeah. your sleeping, eating patterns. I mean, this is going on in the world. But if you can't look after yourself, yeah, exactly. That's true. Not, because you're like helping, absorbed you're not by be helping it. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. This happened during COVID. So it's, as well. why, I mean, what is it called? Empathy. It's called empathy fatigue. Empathy fatigue. It was first, well, first I heard of it was during COVID. Okay. Where you just see death, and yes, I I can say I had it too. It's death and destruction. Every oh yeah, because you were it's, on the you clock just, all you the just time. You just blank. You're just coming in to do a job. Wow. You can't. You, you can't do anything about it because you're you like see, you're literally yeah. seeing hundreds of patients mm. a day. Hundreds. Uh, that's in a day. A, yeah, in a day. You, <laughs> and it just sounds like a number you say to be like exaggerating. You know. If somebody had told me and I had explained, I would say, you, there's no way. Mm. I worked mm. between two hospitals, I can say. Wow. And I mean, peak, the fact that you were sleeping, I yeah. I had I had 117 wow. between the two on one. That was my peak. That's On in, average, we intense. were doing between 70 and 80 a day. <laughs> can you even function like that? You can't. That's why you, you just physically, and you just became, you can't. So you couldn't, you, you couldn't even counsel families anymore. You just, we like, had to, oh, we to, had say to get, that we had to hire somebody. Yeah. Just one person just to speak are you to serious the yeah to say and that to just get a doctor we just used to give them the updates and they have to go to whoa because you can't getting emails and calls you, you can't and I mean, the wanted, family couldn't get into the hospital and so on yeah you don't know you, you you brought in your husband your daughter yeah you know somebody and, and the they passed you away them, they, well you don't even get to see them because the, you don't see them again no because the yeah the, whoa the, that the ones with the mice <laughs> had to be listening to to that now it it's was horrible like it you was like we live that we ran out of body bags. Wow! It looked like a war zone. When I say it, like we looked like we were in Beirut or something, I couldn't believe it. Are you serious? Uh-huh. I mean, blood on the floor. It was just. It was. It was like literal, literal war zone. People waiting for. People waiting for. We had to sign the dead books just so we could get the bodies out, so another patient could come. Oh and my take god! It. <laughs> it was so bad. It you know, was so, empathy so fatigue bad. Came out. I, c- I can't even believe that. Like you're saying, I know we've seen things on the news, and but. Like hearing it again after you know, all like these. some of those images in China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when they came out when... And people the on the street and stuff. It. Yeah, that's how it was, yeah. Well, okay. Not all the alongside the not hospital. The street, corridors, yeah. Oh, the corridors? Yeah, we were not seeing people on gunnies. And the cor- gunnies and nothing. Oxygen, wherever you could just get an oxygen point. Wow. Put them on. We had no that's treatment. That's intense. Yeah. Mm. It was pre-vaccine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second wave with the vaccines... Did it get better? A little better. It was still very bad. But... Most of our patients survived. It wasn't uh, the fact that our bodies now dealing with this whole COVID thing and the vaccine helped together. 
Mm. It wasn't just the vaccine only. No, it was it was it everything. Was it was together of, and, okay. and more. Not that the vaccine didn't have its side effects. Yes, people yeah. got sick, but I haven't lost a patient purely to COVID on a vaccine. Oh, okay. And also, oh, my right. colleagues have the same. Yeah. The same experience. Going back to the side effects, uh, did any of your patients, like let's say recently, say that? I'm having this type of thing. It never happened to me before. And then you were like, you know what? Maybe it's a side effect. Not recently, but when the vaccines first started. Of course, yeah. but yeah, now yeah. nothing so what, really. No, no. Now, no one's talking about some arm pain, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, at the injection oh, Okay. Side. But no. No they headaches and there wasn't there nothing really. really. No well, reported. Yeah, some of them do. But I mean, you can attribute that to a lot of things. Oh, that's another thing. Um, yeah, yeah. But you can never, like for the minor stuff. Yeah. Headaches and fatigue. You can't, you can't really... Oh, just pinpoint it okay. specifically to the Yeah, vaccine. yeah, I get so what you means, mean. Yeah, we can say, hey, you know what, you had a reaction to this. But that was at the time it happened. Yeah, oh. Yeah. So obviously vaccines, again, boosters have been much more modified compared to the yeah. first one. They have a lot so it's more, a lot lesser or it's a lot more concentrated. More specific for that. Yeah. Uh, treating a broader or trying to cover more of the, you know, the, the antigen mutation. Oh, okay, okay, because right. Because more plasma to yeah. more patients. Also, you, they, it knows what's happening. You it's can fine, yeah. uh, Again, and as develop. Forward, yeah, it's gonna yeah. Be. So where were we like on the scale of uh, developing medication in South Africa compared to the rest of the world? Pretty high up. Oh, we were. Yeah, we you know the final product may have not left here, but no, I mean. So the, we are okay. Because we heard like uh, researchers from UKZN and uh, from uh, Wits and so on were like in a so, part so of the, the developing. So the one thing that really pushed forward was that the survivors of COVID were donating their plasma. Really? You, you, some celebrities went on. Oh, and okay. Doing it. And obviously, here we would love to have done that. I think in the research centers. Oh, they actually did that. In Cape Town, we were doing it. Oh, wow. So we're doing a lot so of... So survivors uh, yeah. of COVID so they have did, antibodies. Yeah. So yeah. they were giving that up. Yeah, that's where the vaccines developed. Oh, okay. Oh, that's so uh, amazing live, to so know. So when they say live, live, live viral... Yeah, literally. That's, that's where it That's came literally what it, ha- what it was. Whoa. Uh, I th- before we uh, like you know kind of wrap up and stuff, I just want to ask you. Gonna ask, you know, you've done a lot of work in all of this um, COVID and post-COVID, and listening to you, hearing you sleeping on the couch and stuff. So I guess the question is, which I started asking people recently, uh, are you happy? With what? <laughs> just thing. like you know, in, in general, just like the way you feel, like life and work and everything. I'm grateful yeah. for all the opportunities. Like everybody, I feel there are certain aspects of my personal life and career and stuff that I want to. Mm. I mean, you always want to. You always want to strive for something better. But yes, no. I'm, I'm a husband. I'm a father. Right? I have a roof over my head. I have yeah. uh, practices. I can do what I enjoy doing. You, like in terms of happiness, and uh, you kind of attributed it to like different aspects. Is that uh, the aim, that we, something that we all should do in, in order to maintain some level of happiness? Because like you said, you, know, you, have, your, you have a roof over your head, your family, you know, your wife, your, ki- your kid and stuff. And that's what, where you get your happiness from. But a lot of people have that and they're still not happy. Again, it's a very subjective mm. emotion. Like, again, whenever things are overwhelmed, take a step back and try to take account of what's positive in your life first, then what's negative, yeah. and then what can I change in what's negative, or what do I perceive as negative? No, I don't, I don't know anyone who's 100% happy with anything. That's why it's always like, they say you count your blessings. Yeah. Again, it's not always easy. Yeah, you may have a family, but you're struggling to support them. Or then you're like, okay, but look, I have my health, I can support them. Okay. For me, health is paramount. So it's like gratitude more than no, anything. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, you have to... Because if you don't do that, you, you're just going to be yeah. miserable and sad. And it's a, it's a knock-on effect. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, and look, I'm not talking about depression and where there's nothing. You, you know, that's like, that's like a biochemical. Yeah, disorder. yeah, I'm exactly. Not talking about, I'm talking about us day to day. Just daily, like, daily like lives. On a day now, I'd be still seeing patients if you weren't here. I'll be doing my admin. And I will tell you right now, I'd yeah. be crashing and trying to like decide now what to Oof. do. So that aspect you like don't like. Yeah. So again, you try to... It's a part of the journey. Again, you try to balance. I, yeah. I know things that I like. I don't always have time to do it. I love gaming. I love reading. I, okay, again, that's good. I don't really yeah. have... Like, time you know, to always... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, finding a balance. They always, any, you know, the so-called influencers or yeah. anything, they always talk about balance. And please don't be fooled about what happens on Instagram and mm. Facebook. All these, yes, they do get the rare, but all these people who are like, 
perfect bodies and perfect mm, surroundings. Mm. And so, that is not what happens in real life. That's and true. And that's not something you should aspire to. Yes, admire their photography skills or their fashion. Take the better part of it. But don't aspire to, to what... To be entirely there. Because, yeah, to what other people. Yeah. You must find out what, what will make me happy. More money? No, not necessarily. Yeah, yeah. More cars? Yes, it's nice to have. Yes, I'm a car person. I yeah. enjoy the engineer, but I know that's not what's gonna make me happy. Yes, on the drive. It's just a home, part of you. It's a part. It's a small yeah. part. So I think, in terms of the happiness, it's it's little parts. It's trying to find the joy in these little everyday yeah. things. Like you have something to look forward to. Like, hey, the cricket is gonna be on soon. Great, I'm looking. So like these small that. joys small along the way. Things. You yeah, have which I that's true. You have to search for those, especially with what's happening in the world. You yeah, have to search. Be aware. Of what's going on, have a voice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Help where you can, like you know, make you know, even if they can't, like spread awareness of what's going on, like what you believe in. Yeah. I always tell my people: try to leave the world a slightly better place than you found it. Oh. Because remember, it's we're doing it for the next generation. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They, they, they are going to be looking after us. Whatever, yeah. This is the legacy we're leaving behind. That's true. What are we leaving behind for them? Because we're looking uh, at them coming up. So exactly. what is it? Living a legacy of look? hate, yeah. racism, war, mm. a failed ecosystem. Yeah, is well, that that's where it is. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's where we are at the moment. That's where we are. Yeah. And it's like it's looking like there's no way yeah. forward to that type of thing. Yeah. I mean, if we are, if we have the ability to send rockets to Mars, yeah. can you imagine if all of this wasn't happened, where, we, where humanity would be now? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it looks, when you look at the internet, it looks very bleak. And you don't, you don't know where to go from there. And then you kind of like take it upon yourself. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, my life but is also internet, as bleak. Look at what, what an invention, if you would yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. What we could have done with Positive, this. positive where, things. Like we could have been colonizing where. You know, uh, one of the things is, you know, uh, uh, like I said, I'm nerdy, but Star Trek, I don't know if anybody watches it. Yeah. Like Gene Roddenberry, who created it. They were like, but why do you like it? If you watch the older episode, what it was what his hope for humanity was. Oh, okay. Star Trek was based on, there were no wars on on Earth. Yeah. Currency, as we know, doesn't exist. Everybody worked together. Yeah. And he was one of the first person to have a a female lead, non-white, non-Caucasian. Oh, yes, I heard about that. Yeah. I watched Big Bang Theory, uh, I think they yeah. said that. Uhura. And yeah. you know, in the interview there now, she's in her 80s or 90s. And now, the, the you know, the people are talking, what you meant to me. Whoopi Goldberg said to her, you are the first female wow that was and that's what made her go into acting and she's an oscar she also acts in this yeah film. but stuff like that it was you can uh, inspire your people humanity. yes definitely like what what we could become um explorers mm. scientists um if all all the fighting and stuff were with other <laughs> were with other species yeah but even then in that why were they fighting yeah why? it was there's always what, a reason it was a like sort of a thing on what humanity is and that's literally what we're doing now Fighting over resources, fighting over religion, 100%, fighting over skin yeah. color, fighting over who is better, fighting over what. Exactly. It seems like so uh, like trivial, but it's exactly. the biggest uh, fights in the world. Yeah. The, the astronauts like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and all these guys are set up. You know, when they actually, when they actually landed yeah. on the moon and they looked at Earth, they were like, they couldn't believe that everything, all the politics, all the politics, yeah. all the junk... All the thing seems so I- insignificant wow. when you are looking at this. Yeah, from and the like, perspective we that they all, had. We all live on this one blue ball and we should be. That's a- absolutely yeah. true, actually. You know, it's such a absolutely. beautiful sentiment. But, hey, whether we That's where Earth Day there. came about. Yeah. It's insane because you they're looking at everything. But now you're in yeah. it, it's like uh, nothing else matters. Imagine the power of humanity. Everybody's yeah. different backgrounds, intelligence, skills yeah. being put into one sort of pool. What that's what it is. Achieve? Yeah, that's true. That's what Elon Musk. I think he said that we have. Uh, there's no way in the world or in the universe you find consciousness like ours. Because if they were, we would find them already. Yeah. But we have like at the moment the highest consciousness there is. Or maybe people are just avoiding us because like what, <laughs> what, other, other, <laughs> what other species destroys itself on its own? Because yeah. Not, not viral, not fungal, not bacterial. Yeah. No one in the animal or plant kingdom. They all work together. They work like yeah. they'll find some sort of symbiotic relationship or whatever. Like I'm talking about. Not but what, which not works? Themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like. Yeah. This is yeah. Nothing. This is no totally. Other species does yeah. It. We were the first that way, so that's yeah. good. <laughs> good unique. for us. We're <laughs> unique. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the last last sentiment, as we wrap up. So I know you always you very uh, uh, 
let's say proud of giving back to humanity like not not Shari. just uh, yeah. community to humanity and the second generation that that's coming or the next generation what are your words of um, let's say words of wisdom for those that are going to become doctors or you know just anyone who wants to leave an impact positive impact so if you think you're becoming a doctor don't <laughs> no i said that thing just okay so speaking from the medical field just know what you're getting into um make sure the decision is yours mm. i'm talking about if you lucky enough to have that some people like i said don't have a choice or they think they don't have a choice mm-hmm. it is not easy yes there's a glamorous aspect it is not like what it is on tv mm. right um american shows uk shows are very different also to the south african so remember that is hollywood based they are telling yeah. stories <laughs> telling yeah if, if you somebody had to come to a hospital and really record what goes nobody's going to watch it because <laughs> it's, it's not so 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 just know what you're getting into ask there is the world of information at your fingertips mm. at the click of a button um i don't know just try to be kind i guess uh Simple acts of kindness. Yeah, well, that's the best we could Easier say. Easier said than done. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we, everyone's grumpy and stuff. But try. <laughs> All I can say is try. Just like I understand the next person. Like, you know, I think, I'm not sure if you posted it, where someone's, everyone you meet is going through a challenge yeah. or... Yeah. That, that's that's true. So I did that in a... So, so I remember I posted one as one in jest, but it, it had yeah. a serious message. So, so the thing I did was, you know, uh, the person you next, next to you what um you don't know what difficulties they are going yeah, through yeah yeah so make your move before they make theirs yeah. you know, but <laughs> yeah are, but there's yeah. nothing just i mean yeah. you, you don't know what. be aware and be yeah. uh, empathetic uh, in a way i can also say look i'm guilty like um on the road because i want to get home fast you know i had the, so i was fast becoming a person with like oh uh, not like dangerous but you know just like and yeah. i was just like you know what if i get angry it's in my car I don't try not to make gestures. Oh, okay, okay, Things right. Beyond when you're tech, when the Keep it within driver, yourself. Yeah, when the taxi drivers cut you off, just leave it. Just let them <laughs> it happens go. way too often. That's South African, like... That's South African culture. You can control. Mm. Nobody can control. Just let it go. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's just stuff like that. One so, wrong move like can that. change entire yeah, life. Yeah, just, just simple stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And another thing, fights, physical fights. I'm not talking about MMA. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah. about fights. Yeah. Are the most idiotic thing that you could ever get involved in yeah true right um many people have come close just please just walk away that's all i can say. yeah like you just see it because it will like change I you see it every day it, it just says really? somebody who lost an eye like you go out for a night and you lose it and you lose it no i mean you, what's the point of it and then or spend the rest of your life like it is just not worth it yeah true so simple stuff like that it's just just, just be mindful my head. keep to yourself exactly. in a way well, yeah just you know like those uh where you want to just lose your mind, just exactly. do it in your imagination. It's so easy, yeah. It is so easy to just, um, yeah, get lost in yeah. what's going on. And with all, uh, there was, there's something called the Desiderata. My father used to uh, recite it over and over. Yeah. And the last line of it, uh, you know, with all its sham, drudgery and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Mm. It's like, strive to be happy. Yeah, so that's that true. Was, that was the last... Uh, yeah, so, it's actually a very good sentiment. Yeah, so it's called the Desiderata. I, Desiderata. I, 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 everybody should like go at it. It's quite a long. I don't really. It's not a sonnet. It's a. It's a passage. Oh, okay. Just Desiderata. Well worded. I think I'll try and link that there. Yeah. Nice to. It's very nice. I nice sentiment my dad, there. That's one. One of my fondest memories. Like we used to have a, a poster printed out. Yeah. And by the used to like. Recite it. It's such a nice thing, such a positive thing yeah, to look at yeah. because, yeah, the world will always be the way it is, but it's yeah. from you what, what you put what out you there, make what you make and of it. Don't ever think one person can't make a change. Don't ever let I actually love that. <laughs> don't ever let anyone tell you that. Yeah. Because it, sometimes the, it makes you feel like, exactly. just me, I and can't even, do it, even, but it's not even, true. Even if you think you're young and a child, don't ever think you have more power than you know. Mm. Like how, what thing, if you think you can't change, remember, right, your attitude will affect, say, your, your mom's attitude. Your mom will say, hey, my child is this happy, this is happy at work. Mm. She has a positive outlook on her colleagues. Mm. Her colleagues are like, wow, okay, this is good. And spread. It's and just spread like, and a, spread. like a chain. So it's not just negativity that, that spreads, it's positive. positivity as well. That's true. Actually, I don't think we look at that too. Yeah. Everything's negative toward us all the time. And I always tell them, remember, light moves quicker than dark. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for that. Well, uh, Dr. Naidu, Leon. Me, the philosopher. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good. No. We need more people to give up positive because there's, there's so less of it, honestly. Exactly. Yeah. There's too less. And especially in our own communities, when you hear 
our people's voices there and saying, you know, you can be just like me. This is what I did. I worked hard. I sacrificed. You can do that too. I didn't snap my fingers and become where yes. I am today. It's yeah. it's not easy. It's not overnight success yeah. by any means. Yeah. So if you try and put the work in, you'll get there too. And that's what I feel like with the, the part that's what I'm trying to achieve mm-hmm. with this because I want people to get positive uh, information from people like you that are in the community that have been doing the work for years and years. And that's the best way I know like kids in school to look up. Don't just look at the person, Chris Brown in the US and doing what he's doing. Look at the people that are around you. We're also doing amazing things. Exactly. It's not always hurt, but we are doing it. Yeah. And and also try to try to give the attention to like the real people who are gonna make a difference. Like the environmentalists. Yeah. Like yeah. if you have social media, there's nothing wrong with following Taylor Swift. And I mean, yeah, cool, I'm a Swiftie. I, yeah. I mean, okay, she's got a lot of positive, but I mean, uh, I'm talking about other there are people others, who don't yeah, really they, yeah. benefit the Not world, just the entertainers. You know I mean? Not just the entertainers. Yeah. Like, but the real, like the Greta Thunbergs. Of oh, course. yes, yes. Stuff like that. They yeah. all have a message. Find who? I mean, you may never know. Hey, I've got they a could inspire for, exactly. for recycling. Yeah. Oh, hey, I can actually make a difference. And you can move your community in that way. How do they start? Yeah. Start it small. That's true. Right. One step. Yeah, and you never give up on it. You yeah. just keep on. It it comes from you affect, uh, you can affect, making you can impact. Affect one person a day. I mean, that's that's a lot. Too. Yeah, exactly. And that's like the the bigger message here. Exactly. If one person can do it, you can. You can like you said, the ripple yeah. effect. Everyone becomes happier yes. and a better version. Yeah. That's See, all we it's can exactly hope. Exactly with us. I mean, you reached out to me. Yeah. Now, like, you've met three of my stuff. Now they're going to tell these people, and now they're going to tell this. Yeah. This is the message. This is how it gets fed. Exactly. This is the message that. That you are, that Dylan is portraying. This is what he wants to get across. Yeah, that, yeah. that's true, I guess. And it, it's always nice to see it, like the magic kind of happening that exactly. way. And then you allowed us to come into your practice because then it, it's it's difficult now because you need to be at work and we want to get you want to get your message out there and we want to hear it from you. So this is the only time we can do these things and put ourselves out there, I guess. Like besides being a physician, you still make things on Instagram and it it's so much, but it's something positive. You have to try. Yeah, have to yeah. Try. yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I think we'll we'll end it here. We we'll talk forever. We yeah, yeah, look we like can. talkers. We yeah. Can't believe it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, Dr. Yeah. Naidu, Leon, thank you so much for thank coming on the show so and much. spreading your positivity, yeah. your uh, philosophies, and so on. It it means a lot, especially uh, you know, the next generation listening to this, and even patients of yours or people that probably want to come to you after this. So seeing how much a passion you have in your uh, in your work that you do, it. it it's nice to see that, honestly. I feel that sometimes we do lose and we lose hope seeing people worry about other things and not uh, the passion of what they're doing. So we really appreciate the work that you do and thank you again for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege. Oh, thanks. And yeah, no, it really is nice. It's actually nice just talking to a exactly. fellow human. Yeah. You know, it's, it's nice. Yeah, true. It's, yeah. Yeah. So I really did enjoy this. So I thank both of you. <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah. And those of you who are watching on YouTube, if you have any questions for us, please... Write it down in the comments. We'll get back to you. Uh, it's either uh, I'll comment or Dr. Naidu will comment. Mm-hmm. If you need to know anything, if you know where his practice is, he'll give out his information to you now. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this episode so a lot more people can be uh, inspired by it. You can give us your information and how uh, we can contact we will, maybe you. Maybe you can add it in a link uh, yeah. in one of the comments. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So you guys can... Um, I post a lot of information... Uh, we try to do it in a humorous way to get our message across. So um, primarily, I have uh, Instagram. So you can find me, uh, Dr. Underscore Leon Naido. Um, so all my details and stuff are there. But like I said, we'll you know, we'll try and yeah. put, uh, put it on the link. And you're welcome to a lot of patients ask, or a lot of people ask questions and just some advice. Sometimes, you know, is Goes this good? Way. Is this bad? What do I do? It can help. Like... Um, the world is never poorer with more knowledge in it. True. Just remember that. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Okay. See you next one. Thank you.